religion and spirituality. Motorist the I'm gonna shoot up. Yeah. Hey, Ophir, what's up? My name is Kevit. Welcome to Kevit News. So I'm here with Dr. Bamija. Congratulations. Let's start there. Congrats, Dr. Sure, sure, sure. Tag that. So we are here to talk about spirituality and religion. First, Doc, can you please explain, is there a difference between spirituality and religion? Yeah, I think, I think there is. Mm. I wish I could have prepared for this topic, but I think maybe if I, if I come unprepared, maybe I'm, I'll be representing my own views rather than sponsored views. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think there, there is a, there's a distinction between the two. Can you try to clarify us with you about the distinction? Okay, I think um, I think spirituality has to do with um, the connection that we have with a deity, be it the God of Heaven, mm. be, be it whatever deity you believe in. Mm. Spirituality is, is a space in which logic does not necessarily dominate it's a place whereby we relate through our spirits that domain it's called spirituality okay. however religion is a space where it's it's governed by a set of rules mm -hmm. that we consciously obey in order to do what is right according to our beliefs okay which may be a way into a spiritual place however uh. the set of rules themselves constitute a they are materialistic, you would say. Like, like you said, spirit, the spiritual world is, has nothing to do with the... With the, the rules the, per se, but it's a space. Oh, it's that a space we, where there are no... Where we connect with... with the, where we connect with the unseen. Okay, yes. Yeah, and, 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 and religion is, is a set of rules that we... On either how, are, how can we connect? How, yeah, or what is expected of us. Or for us to connect which can raise a lot of debates and all that but it's, a, it's about a set of rules that oh. are explainable and are tangible okay so there's this uh is it the religion christianity i've heard people say it's not a religion so now according to me christianity is a, is a i would say it's a, it's a famous religion so would you say christianity is a religion yes it is okay and it uses the bible right and then you said something about the religion being a set of rules. So how would you define the Bible? Before we get to the Bible, I think the context on which when somebody says Christianity is not a religion, mm. that statement is correct and may be incorrect depending on the context the on which they are, they are saying it. They are simply saying spirituality, Christianity is more of a spiritual path oh. than a religious path. Mm. But saying it's a religion, also has a basis so for example um, in the book of james chapter 1 verse 27 mm. where james says that the true religion is the one where we take care of the orphans and we visit the sick and all that mm. that is still christian and the bible itself calls it a true religion so okay. when so when somebody is saying christianity is not a religion the context on which they are saying that mm. is that um, there are many religions that have lost touch with spirituality. It's now they are now uh, more focused on the set of rules and have ignored the deity part of it or the God part of it. He's saying Christianity is more a spiritual path mm. that cares, but very less about the set of rules. So the main okay. focus, the person is, is an emphasis. It's a question, is a statement of emphasis rather than a debate that Christianity is not a religion. Oh, oh. It, depend, it depends on the context. The context. Okay. So can we move on to the Bible? I'm mm. not really going to go yes, deep yes. into the Bible and try to argue it. Mm. But would you say, how would you define a Bible? You know, a Bible is a book. In, in books, we have practical manuals, we have novels, we have different types of books. Mm. Where would you categorize the Bible? Okay. The Bible, it is, it is a book that is um, verified on many levels and therefore can be defined on many levels. There is a part of the Bible which is mainly a history book, mm. purely history, a history book. The book of Kings is purely history. The book of Samuel is purely history. Mm. But again, there is a, the part of the Bible that is a prophetic book where it was the writings of the prophets. 
Oh. It's strictly the prophets were prophesying and their prophecies were written down. Okay. Then there is a part of the Bible which is a poetic book whereby as the likes of uh, uh, Psalms, the likes of when David would be giving his own pra uh, praises to God, mm. those would be documented. So if I say the Bible is a history book, I'm mm. correct. If I say the Bible is a poetic book, yeah. I'm correct. Okay. If I say the Bible so, is a prophetic book, I'm correct. And it's all in all. You can conclude by saying the Bible is not a book, but it's, it's, it's a set of books. You yeah, you, you can put it that way. Okay. So this discrimination by this religion slash spiritual belief, Christianity, would you say would you say it exists? Would you say Christianity discriminates against other uh, religions? Uh, uh, it, it honestly depends. It, it depends on uh, um, the integrity you want to give to the word spirituality. Do you want to restrict spirituality to um, the definition I gave before of yes. a space in which you relate with any deity or do you want to define spirituality as a space in which you relate to God and by God I, I'm saying that carefully knowing that there are many gods yes. however I'm speaking about Yahweh the God of the Bible if we're talking the, about the God of the Bible mm. then the Bible might be discriminating and rightfully so but if you want to recognize all other gods then the topic changes if, depending on whether spirituality you are referring to the bible or the god of heaven kind of spirituality or spirituality in general regardless of yeah spirituality in general i don't want to restrict it to the bible then the bible it represents its own spirituality, which is the, the spirituality within the Christianity context. Mm. So would you say that context discriminates against other uh, other beliefs? It definitely does, because it, the, the basis of Christianity is that Christ is the only path to God. Mm. So any other path that would want to go to God without Christ is discriminated by the Bible. Mm. That's, the, that, that's the Bible's opinion. That is the cornerstone of the, of the Christian gospel is that Christ is the only way to God. So if there is any other religion that says we have another way, mm. then that falls out of the Bible. Then the Bible does discriminate against it. Yes. Mm. Okay. 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 So since clearly there's a division between the, the spirituality in terms of Christianity and other 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 religions, there's 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 no connection there it's okay i understand that so now let's move into christianity on its own there's still beef within christianity we have churches talking down on other churches and they both call themselves christian christians so what is that based on the 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 the, the conflict between christianity christians um you see um what differentiates it is uh, perspective. Mm. It, it's perspectives. Mm. And it is not a wrong thing. Okay. It is not entirely a wrong thing. There is a place where it is wrong, but there's a place where it is right. And it is not entirely prohibited even by the Bible itself. When, when Jesus left, he gave a command that, um, go ye to, the, uh, to Jerusalem, Judea. Mm. Go ye to the... Uh, uh, yeah, to Jerusalem, Judea, uh, to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. Preach the good news. Mm. So, one of one thing that they wanted to do was to stick together. But the more people stick together in perspective, they start differing in perspectives and all that. Yes. And those per the differences in perspectives will want one to perpetuate at a particular perspective mm. and all that. Then the church starts uh, dividing them. For example, let's let's say uh, we've got different perspectives on the doctrine of speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. We've got different perspectives on the doctrine of the prophetic and all that. Mm -hmm. What it does, it helps the church grow because it helps people uh, spread the good news on, on, a, on a broader scale. The fact that they cannot agree on other perspectives, it helps them disperse and it helps them make branches more and more and grow. Mm -hmm. However, what should be kept in common mm. is the cornerstone of the Bible. Mm. 
the things that Jesus emphasized, the things that Christianity emphasized and is built upon, those are the things we are not allowed to differ on. Oh, so you say you are allowed to differ, but there has to be a basis where we agree. Yeah, there are things we are not allowed to differ on. When we mm-hmm. differ on those things, then the Bible will have to come and judge who is wrong, who is right. There are things that the Bible doesn't care about. For example, Paul talks about a prohibition of other foods which were prohibited according to the Old Testament mm. and according to the New Testament, there were those who believed they could eat everything. Mm. Paul says those who eat should not judge those who do not eat. Those who do not eat should not judge those who eat. Mm. And now, it's simply saying that Christianity does not care about the differences. Mm. But there are things that Paul says, if anybody comes and teaches you any other thing different from the one I've taught you, even if it be me or the angels from heaven or any other person, do not accept it. Then he's saying on, those are the, the foundations of the gospel. If you differ on that, then we must judge who's wrong and who's right. And one must be false and one must, you know, must be I must say that is very controversial. What you said about others eating and others not eating, the Bible does not care about that. Hey, that is very controversial. <laughs> so, so someone can be poor and someone rich, it, it, it makes no difference. The Bible says God made both the rich and the poor. Yes, so it should be like that. that, that, that that's, the Bible recognizes it. Oh, okay. Oh, it's not saying it should be like that, if, it acknowledges... If, even to an extent of those who want to come to God through the Old Testament and those who want to come to God through the New Testament, mm. um, much as God uh, has made a demarcation mm. that um, um, we do not come to God by works, Paul says to the Galatians, ye foolish Galatians, you started in the spirit and now you want to come to God by the law. Much as there is that, that, that fundamental uh, demarcation, mm. Paul still says that those who believed God through the law will be judged by the law. And those oh. who believe God through the oh. grace, the dispensation of grace will be judged through the grace. Okay. It, what, what matters is it, it, it's, a, it's the position of the heart as it does. God does not really care about those minor integrities as long as the cornerstone of the gospel is maintained. Okay. So uh, we have fake prophets. What do you think of them? It's exactly the concept I'm saying. The person who has removed the lordship of Jesus from the gospel mm. is false. The person who how do, is how do we get to a point where we call this person false? How do we how do we get there? When the cornerstone of their message or their preaching is not Christ. If if I do anything and the, and anybody receives the glory mm. except Christ, oh. that's a first option. It's all about it, we could say it's it's about credit. Whoever you, you it depends on who you give credit to. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's about who takes credit. Mm. Somebody, sometimes it's mainly about you are reducing the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whereby Jesus can be assisted by something. His Lordship is reduced. That's a false doctrine. Whereby there is another way of going to God except Jesus. Then that reduces the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Whereby there are other things that we keep and use that help God move. That reduces the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Oh, we can call that fake prophecy. Whereby I lay hands on the sick and all that, mm. then I become the superstar and the, the greatest performer in the gospel, so much that the credit is now on you. It's more on credit and also on reducing the Lordship. Yeah, who is the center yeah. at the center about stage? Who, do you fully trust or do you want to use something to, to aid? Okay, okay, I, I, I understand, okay. So, uh, ancestors, since we were talking about spirituality and spirits, I, 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 I understand that spirituality has to do with spirits. So, ancestors, can we, how, what do you think of ancestors? I would like you to put context on that. Oh, the context is this, ne? Mm-hmm. An, an ancestor is someone from, I would say my ancestor would be someone from my family that died some time back. So now people would come and tell me that is an evil spirit. How how do you get to that conclusion about someone that relates to me? And all of a sudden now they, they are an evil spirit. Okay. In 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 I'm I'm gonna take a long route to explain this one. No, it's, I'll it's try fine. to be as short as possible. Okay. Um Genesis one. Mm. God creates men. 
Mm. Genesis 2, God forms man. Mm. Genesis 1, man is created, is a spiritual being. Genesis 2, the spiritual being is given a body. Okay. Then that body is still not alive until God breathes the breath of life into, right. his, into his, no, his nostrils and man becomes a living soul. Mm. Now, when man had sinned, God makes a declaration that the body was made out of dust, therefore it will belong to here. Mm. But the spirit goes back to its owner. The spirit goes back to God. Mm. You get it? Mm. When a man dies, if the man is not born again, what they lose is not their spirit, because their spirit is God. Okay. What they lose is their soul, mm. because their soul is their base, is their essence of being human. Mm. That is the human part in you. You have a body, mm. the, your, the spirit belongs to God, mm. but you have a soul, which is something that you can lose. Mm. However, now, um, uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes, I think it's chapter 10, verse 5. Is it 10, 5? I think, I think we'll, we'll, we'll have to refer. Mm. Where it says that, those who are dead, um, their love and their hate. I think let, let's check. Let's check. Let's check that scripture. Um, it's just verse nine, verse four. Mm. It says, um, uh, "Anyone who's among the living has hope. Even a living dog is better off than a dead lion." Mm. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward. <coughs> even, their me even the memory of them is forgotten. Mm. Their love, their hate, and their jealousy have long since vanished. Never again will they have any part in anything that happens under the sun. Mm. So, much as scripture recognizes uh, 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 th their importance when they are alive uh, th they deserve honor mm. it says it, it, still, it, it clearly uh, states that once they are dead their love and their hate is gone with mm. them and they will not have part in anything that happens under the sun and there's a doctrine that says in the new testament there's a point whereby jesus is on the mountain with his three disciples mm. and moses and elijah appeared mm. and the, somebody will say this was the ancestors appearing because uh, these guys were not alive the truth is that elijah never died mm. elijah never died he was taken to heaven again moses Moses went to the mountain and died. However, the devil wanted to get his body so that the body could keep, keep on being presented to the Israelites as an ancestor and all that. Mm. But the angel of the Lord was sent to come and tell the devil, the devil, uh, the Lord rebukes you. The body of Moses was taken by God. Mm. So the people that could appear are those whose bodies never saw decay on earth. It's, it, 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 it's a different kind of setting when it appeared in the Bible. Mm. Then which, which kind of gives a, a, a room as far as the scripture is concerned. So we, we, we definitely can therefore now come and say, uh, scripture is clear. Our only way to God is Christ. So the doctrine of ancestor is, ancestors is false. It's a false doctrine and is there to deceive the people of God and again it reduces the Lordship of Jesus Christ because there seems to be these people who are intermediates between us and God the Bible says Christ is the only way so when you say it's false are you saying they don't exist yes the scripture says so mm. says that their love and their hate is it's dead gone. with them and no therefore they have got the no part under the sun mm. so if there is any kind of reality that you are experiencing in that particular space mm. the devil is playing with your mind <laughs> It's illusions. You're oh, saying it's illusions. It's spirits. Oh, they are there. It, it, no, the devil is lying to you. Remember, the Bible says the devil is is a father is is a father of all lies. Mm. The devil is lying to you and presenting things that he knows you love. You love, but he knows once you <coughs> you participate in that particular kind of an agenda, mm. you have contravened the scripture. Mm. Then he's able to 
use his spirit uh, presenting the pictures of the people that you know and love. Mm. But th that's not them speaking. Oh, it's the, it's that's the devil lying to you. And don't tell me because they told me something which was true and they told me to do something and it worked, mm. then it means uh, the, the, uh, it's, my, it's really my ancestors. No. Who says the devil doesn't know those things to even tell you? So the devil communicates with people, sharp, sharp. Yes, he does. And sometimes he uses their memories against them, or he manipulates memories. Yes, he does. Sometimes not even memories. Sometimes mm. you even speak to people you have never met. Mm. No, sometimes they come as people only. Exactly. But I, I do not want to get to details to how the devil operates. Mm. I just want to stand in a place whereby I can defend scripture through scripture. Okay. Speaking of defending scripture through scripture, homosexuality. Mm. Uh, growing up, I grew up in a, in a, in a, in a Christian family. And then, as I was growing up, there were pastors who were against uh, homosexual people. So I, I, to this day, I don't understand how, like, how are we against them? How do they not? Someone, someone is even bold to say they, they are not going to have to heaven. Like, how, how do we get there? What does a person's sexuality have to do with their spiritual being? Because. I, 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 in, in the spirit, I understand that in, uh, in, this, in this spiritual world, there's no such thing as male, there's no such thing as female, it's just the spirit, am, am I correct? Or a soul, is there such a thing as a, as a male soul? No. So there's no gender there, we can't talk of gender when we talk about spirituality and the soul. So now how do we go from there to discriminating against uh, homosexual people? You see, um, I, 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 I don't discriminate against homosexuals okay. and I can only account for the kind of doctrine that I preach. Mm. I do not um, I discriminate against them mm. and I, I, I love them. Mm. Yeah. However, this, this, I, I want us to, to have this. Things, I, I hate this thing whereby we, we say things for the Bible that the Bible never said for itself. If the Bible did not prohibit a thing, do not prohibit it. Mm -hmm. And if if the Bible did not say something, do not say it for the Bible. And then if the Bible said something, do not downplay it or underemphasize it. If the Bible emphasizes it, emphasizes a matter, mm -hmm. then that matter must be emphasized in the gospel as we preach. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want us I want to remove as much as I can my opinion about homosexuals and try to present the opinion of the Bible. Okay, can you please do that? <laughs> okay. Um, in the book of Genesis, there's a point whereby uh, Abraham and Lot separated. Mm. And eventually Lot is in a place called Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. And God wants to destroy the place because there was the place was full of sin according to God mm. there's not really much of a demarcation of how sinful these people were mm. but there's one of the sins that stands out according to the Bible or one of the acts let me not call it sin at this point in time because I would have to give a basis on where uh, and, and, and on where it has been uh, presented as such these guys are saying they wanted Lord to come out so that they could sleep with him and all that even when he was offering them his daughters mm. okay another thing this one I, I just want to present it this one is clear okay it's a clear cut mm. kind of a thing let's let's read Romans 1 Romans 1 verse mm, 21 mm. For although they knew God, they did not give him honor as God or give, him, or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for the images resembling mortal men and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up 
in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to dishonoring their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged uh, the truth about about God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And their men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves uh, the due penalty for their error. The Bible calls it a disgrace that God has given up people to because of their they have removed the lordship from god they knew his lordship but they did not recognize it therefore god gave them up to their shameful lust and this and they dishonored their bodies where women were now attracted to gave them up to a space whereby women are attracted to women and men are attracted to men that's not my opinion this is the bible that's the bible that is what the bible calls it says it calls it a dishonor a dishonoring their bodies and shameless acts Shameful acts, that is what the Bible calls it. However, as much as there is a person who is a homosexual, which is a sin according to the Bible, homosexuality is a sin, it defies the order of God. Because as much as in the spirit there is no male and female, in the body there is, and God says, whoever destroys the body, the owner of that body will destroy it. And he says, don't you know that your bodies are the temple of the Lord? As much as the bodies are ours mm. they are his temple and how we treat the body uh, uh, deals directly with the owner of that body so you cannot therefore treat, use the, your body anyhow and say it's yours you get it so therefore um, uh, as much as the bible calls it a sin yes. however the one who said do not steal is the one who said do not kill mm. i do not want to treat homosexuality as a sin that is more than any other sin and and somebody will come and say um i was born this way my mm. body i i did not decide to have the desires and all that and paul says for the good that i want to do i do not do and the bad that i do not want to do is that which i do and if ever i find myself in that position what does it therefore mean it means therefore i'm not in charge but the sin that is in me is the one that is controlling me Remember, you can even be born with such desires. Mm. Simply because when men backslidden, nature also did backslide. It does not make it right because you were born with it. From, from, from a medical perspective, there is an argument that says uh, there are people who are born with, um, uh, who, who grow up with. Um, antisocial personality disorders mm. but with, with conduct disorders which eventually becomes uh, antisocial personality disorders these people are more prone to becoming criminals mm. and there might be a genetic loading for that his father was a criminal he's a criminal and all that you cannot therefore and say stand boldly and say this guy became a criminal by choice mm. i'm not judging you if i'm telling you what the bible says about a matter if i if I see you murdering a person and I tell you that no, what you are doing according to the Bible is wrong, mm. you cannot say I'm judging you, I'm correcting you. Of course, we can stretch it to the word judge itself. There is judge in the context of condemning. Mm. I'm saying to you, you will never change. The context on which Jesus was saying thou shall not judge is the context of condemnation. Because judge can mean the court, in, in court, the court gives a judgment mm. that this is your sentence but there is judging in terms of this is wrong this is right mm. and there is judging in terms of i judge myself in order to change okay i must change this must stop and this so the context of thou shall not judge is it was the content the context of thou shall not condemn but thou shall not judge in the context of um do not determine which one is wrong and which one is right that's not biblical because according to the Bible, we are actually instructed to judge. Mm. The Bible says, if you cannot judge, that is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I think. It says, if you cannot judge these issues among them yourselves, 
how do you think you will survive because the bible says you will even judge the angels you are supposed to judge each other and to judge yourself you are not supposed to condemn so if i'm judging that towards again this is wrong this is right i'm not outside the prescriptions of the bible i'm not condemning you so when i say to you this is wrong this is right and the reason why i'm saying this is because the bible says i'm not judging you as in condemning you i'm correcting you so we are allowed to correct people the bible does allow us to correct people mm. so in conclusion on this matter mm. homosexuality is wrong but homosexuals are not wrong homosexuals yeah. are people that should be loved regardless of the wrongfulness of their act and should be preached to like thieves like any other person Shivan. like liars and any all sins are sins mm -hmm. but they shouldn't be this one is a homosexual then we segregate them we, we don't have that power that's condemnation yeah, we, don't, we, don't, we don't condemn we don't condemn we love them as they are and welcome at them at church because church is not for the holy but church is for everyone that is struggling okay, okay thank you that's the end of our episode do you have anything to say like closing words anything yeah the closing words that i would like to say is that um if if you know when when, when we divide scripture and when we we study the word mm. it's not about who's wrong and who's right we are building each other and we keep on growing mm. and if there is a preacher or um, a man of god or a scholar of the bible who feels you know what uh, dr mamaja here you are missing it let's engage because that is that, that gives growth the the streets of growth are, um, are two-way streets i would like to also grow however at this point in time what i'm sticking to is scripture interpreting scripture and we remove as much as we can our opinions from scripture and allow scripture to interpret scripture but without claiming that what i have is the ultimate truth the correction that we accept it should be biblical let's try as much as is possible to put or impose our opinions on the gospel our opinions are important and they allow us to understand however they should not be the ultimate in a place where you feel you know what here dr mamicha you missed it let's engage and and correct each other and that helps us grow thank you very much thank you.